in in the particular case with the uh, the Fukushima facilities, I mean, this has been seven years or so now since this happened. Mm-hmm. Well, and you said that that the nuclear core is gone, just sinking into the earth. I, I mean, last time we I, think, we think, right? Okay, you're right. You, we don't know. We can't get close enough to even tell what's happening. Um, but I mean, every time I've heard a report on this, I, I I notice two things. One is that they don't really know how to manage this problem. There's no tech. There's no technological fix to this. They can't. Right. And, but the second thing is, and this is what I want to ask, is the Japanese government wants to protect its itself and doesn't want the public to necessarily know how bad this problem really is. Um, what has the the government of, of say Japan and maybe other governments that are are complicit in this as well? Um, but but what has been done to deal with this problem and and in what ways have we been deceived or misled regarding the dangers of this this catastrophe? Well, the media isn't teaching you what's happening, really. And it's, you know, in the hands of the media to teach the average person about the truth of this. Right. Abe, the prime minister, who's a nut, <laughs> he, he's decided to have the 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo parts of which are extremely radio, and in Fukushima. So we're going to have the radioactive Olympic Games in the year 2020. And that's so serious because these young athletes who train like crazy for years and years, beautiful young bodies, they're going to be irradiated. They're going to be eating radioactive food. I mean, it's just obscene. One. Two, the government has decided only to study thyroid cancer. Now, all of these elements, some of which last seconds and some which last millions of years, hundreds of thousands of years, hundreds of years, and concentrate in the food, um, can produce cancers of every organ of the body. But they're only looking at thyroid cancer. They're not looking at leukemia or anything else. Um, And that's obscene medically. Doctors who try and tell their patients that symptoms may be related to radiation poisoning, they lose their government funding. Um, The International Atomic Energy Agency uh, works with the Fukushima Medical uh, University to set up a hospital for cancer patients. Well, that tells you everything. Um, They're bringing people back from the exclusion zones to live in, in highly radioactive areas. I mean, the thing is just a catastrophe beyond belief. And the media is bored. It's not covering it anymore. Right. Yeah, I I hardly hear anything anymore about this problem. And yet, every once in a while, it comes up. But it's always seems a little out of context, whenever it does come up. Um, And and I want to ask then about some people might point to, well, there was this equipment is old. This was done. I don't know when this plant was built or any of the nuclear power plants we currently have. The majority of them were built several decades ago. Um, we have much better technology now. We're much safer in our ability to use nuclear power. Uh, what would your response? That's a lie. Be? What would it's your response be to that? Yeah, it's an absolute lie. The nuclear industry, you know, people who are dedicated to it are almost psychopathic. They're nuclear psychopaths. They are physicists and engineers or business men, mostly men, who don't really understand the medical dangers or if they do, they deny it, or if they get cancer, then they're devastated. Um, There are no safe nuclear power plants. And if you read my book, Nuclear Power is Not the Answer, which you can get from Amazon, published by the New Press, uh, I talk about the small modular reactors that they're keen on building, that they are terribly dangerous and terribly expensive and probably will never be built. A, B, there are AP1000 reactors which are cheaper to build than normal nuclear power plants because they have less cladding and 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 they're, they're called by some eggshell reactors. They're much more likely to have accidents and melt down. But I go into this thing in um, great detail and 
uh, in this book, Nuclear Power is Not the Answer. So I advise everyone to read it if they really want to know what's going on with the so-called new reactors. But even if they don't melt down, they still produce radioactive waste. And that's not what people are talking about, but they need to be because the age of nuclear power is ending. They're far too expensive. They're far too dangerous. And renewable energy is become, becoming cheaper by the day. Solar, wind, geothermal and conservation. Um, and so the nuclear age in terms of the, quotes, peaceful nuclear atom is over. The age of nuclear waste we're embarking on now and no one knows what to do with it. And that's so dangerous, so unbelievably dangerous. And they wanted, they've dug out a big hole in the mountain at Yucca Mountain um, in, Ariz is it Arizona? No. Where's Where's Las Vegas? That's Arizona, that's a, isn't it? That's in Nevada. Nevada. Nevada, yeah, that's right. And they wanted to tra take truckloads of high-level waste from all over the country to Yucca Mountain. I like it, the name. Yucca Mountain is underlined by two earthquake faults. Um, it's porous. The water from the rain pours through, which is dangerous if you've got big vats, big sort of containers of radioactive waste. And you're having thousands of shipments of radioactive waste from all over the country to Yucca Mountain. That's called the Mobile Chernobyl Bill by some because if there's an accident, you know that the fuel rods could burst into flame, they could melt down, they could contaminate huge areas of the country, and you know, millions of people could be at risk over time. It's all madness, nuclear madness. That's the first book I ever wrote, Nuclear Madness, in 1978.